Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. We're excited to kick off this year with a brand new tutorial series on deep learning fundamentals using PyTorch. This series will help you gain a comprehensive understanding of deep learning concepts while leveraging the power of PyTorch. We'll cover topics such as neural networks, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and so much more. You'll also get hands-on experience with coding and building models using PyTorch. Each coding task will provide step-by-step -step guidance, enabling you to create your own projects in no time at all. We'll start by going over various image processing techniques, then we'll go through a real example of building, testing, and evaluating a deep learning model. So join us as we kick off the new year with an exploration of deep learning fundamentals using PyTorch. This is going to be an introductory video about the deep learning fundamentals using the PyTorch framework. There are a lot of frameworks out there right now that we can use in order to learn fundamental concepts about deep learning. But PyTorch nowadays is being utilized by a lot of research scientists and AI enthusiasts to build uh, better applications. First, Let's start by defining what PyTorch is. PyTorch is a machine learning framework based on the Torch library, used for applications such as computer vision and natural language processing, originally developed by Meta AI and now part of the Linux Foundation umbrella. As you might have noticed or have uh, seen from the news, uh, you might have uh, heard about chatbots being developed by Google and OpenAI, such as the GPT-3 and ChatGPT models. These kind of sophisticated natural language processing models are being built by a deep learning frameworks such as PyTorch. That's why PyTorch is nowadays one of the most essential tools as that is being utilized by research scientists to build applications and push them to production. Next, let's see some of the projects that are utilizing the PyTorch framework to build applications. A new uh, piece of deep learning software are being built on top of PyTorch, including the Tesla Autopilot, Uber's Pyro, Hugging Faces Transformers, PyTorch Lighting, and Catalyst. So, <laughs> The authors of the PyTorch framework include Adam Pask, Sam Gross, Sumit Chintala, Gregory Chenan. And one of the famous creators of the PyTorch framework is actually Sumit Chintala. And uh, he's a researcher in Meta. And he's one of the creators of the PyTorch framework. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you his interview or uh, his explanation of the PyTorch framework. So when you go to the uh, official website of PyTorch, you can find some companies and universities that are using PyTorch, such as Amazon Advertising. Uh, they're utilizing PyTorch to reduce inference costs by 71%. Another one is Salesforce, uh, which pushes the state of the art in NLP and multitask learning. And some of uh, the, the universities that are utilizing PyTorch is Stanford University to uh, efficiently research new algorithmic approaches. Next, let's talk about the history of PyTorch. Meta, formal, formerly known as Facebook, operates both PyTorch and convolutional architecture for fast feature embedding CAFE2, but models defined by the two frameworks were mutually incompatible, which means uh, the CAFE framework was actually the previous uh, framework uh, that was used before PyTorch uh, was 
uh, was being utilized by Meta AI. And they pushed these two uh, frameworks at the same time, but they were mutually incompatible. And the Open Neural Network Exchange, or ONNX, if you work on deep learning projects, you might have, uh, if you have already trained a trained model, you can uh, save that model in the form of uh, this format uh, that can be shared uh, with other AI researchers so that they could deploy your model and uh, evaluate the outcome. And it was originally created by Meta and Microsoft in September 2017 for converting models between frameworks. The Kavi 2 framework was merged into the PyTorch at the end of March 2018. And in September 2022, Meta announced that PyTorch would be governed by the PyTorch Foundation, uh, which is a newly created independent organization and a subsidiary of the Linux Foundation. Next, uh, we will see the different uh, deep learning frameworks and, and uh, we will try to compare them in terms of uh, different criteria uh, so that it can help us to evaluate uh, which framework might be useful in, uh, in different kinds of scenarios. So, the Keras deep learning framework is a neural network library, which is an open, which is open source. And TensorFlow, uh, Keras is now integrated into TensorFlow. So these two deep learning frameworks are being used together. And PyTorch is also an open source library, uh, which is provided by Meta. And the second one is the coding language. So Keras is available as a coding and all the codes are scripted in a single line. For TensorFlow, the library is compact with C, C++, Java, and other coding languages. And the accuracy is increased by programming uh, it with small codes. And PyTorch is scripted only with Python and the codes of PyTorch is scripted with larger lines. One thing you, you might notice when uh, writing PyTorch code is that the lines are much longer compared to Keras and TensorFlow. You might assume that it might be a drawback, but it's actually an advantage because when you write out the code, you're actually practicing and understanding the concepts, the machine learning concepts, such as backpropagation uh, and other optimization techniques that you might deploy uh, by scratch and it builds its own computational graph and it, it helps you to track the gradients by yourself. Whereas in Keras and TensorFlow, they are, they, they are much higher uh, level APIs and they can just be, you can just build your application on top of those high level APIs. So in this case, for this course, I chose PyTorch to teach about the deep learning fundamental concepts because it helps you try it out uh, those detailed concepts and PyTorch help uh, by by having larger lines it helps you to practice the concepts a bit deeper compared to the other uh, deep learning frameworks So in terms of applications, Keras is designed to perform robust experiments in neural networks. As is the TensorFlow deep learning framework, it is employed to teach the machine about mul uh, multiple computational techniques. PyTorch is uh, mostly used to build uh, natural language processing and neural networks. So uh, when we compare the level of APIs for, the, for these deep learning frameworks, Keras can execute on Tiano and CNTK as it has high level API and TensorFlow comprises of both low level and high level APIs and PyTorch focuses only on array expression because of 
the its low level API. Because when you're working with PyTorch, you're actually experimenting with low level APIs and uh, it helps you to get a hands-on approach when you learn about deep learning concepts uh, because uh, when you're interacting with low level, because you're handling uh, most of the, uh, you're touching most of the concepts that are necessary for you to understand about deep learning concepts. So it's much easier to grasp the concepts by using PyTorch. Next is architecture. Keras has understandable syntax and it can be easily interpretable. And TensorFlow is popular because of its rapid computation ability in the various platforms, but it has little complex architecture, which is difficult to interpret. And PyTorch for, for beginners, it might feel complicated as PyTorch's architecture is might seem a little bit complex because it uses object-oriented programming, uh, which is not uh, uh, used when you are experimenting with Keras and TensorFlow. But if you are interested in learning about deep learning applications and for academic purposes, uh, PyTorch is being preferred nowadays. Next is the speed. Keras operates at minimum speed only, and TensorFlow works on maximum speed, which in turn provides high performance. And the performance and speed of PyTorch are similar, similar to that of TensorFlow. When we compare in terms of handling uh, certain types of datasets, Keras operates effectively in the smaller dataset at the speed of execution is low, and TensorFlow is highly capable to manage large datasets as it has a maximum speed execute maximum speed of execution, and PyTorch can manage a high performance task in higher dimensional dataset. So uh, next, when I release the videos about uh, the PyTorch coding tutorial. Uh, we're going to see how to handle certain types of datasets by using the dataset and data loader uh, APIs and packages. And we will experiment uh, with these with the different types of datasets so that we could see how PyTorch can help us handle higher dimensional datasets better than Keras and TensorFlow. Next is debugging. The administrator does not require any frequent process of debugging when uh, dealing with Keras. And for TensorFlow, it is challenging to perform debugging. For PyTorch, the abilities to debug is better than Keras and TensorFlow. And uh, when we see, when we experiment with some of uh, the coding tasks, we are going to see how easy it is to debug the code for PyTorch uh, when compared to Keras and TensorFlow. In terms of popularity, Keras is widely used in neural networks and supports uh, convolutional and utility layers. And TensorFlow is famous for its automated image capturing software and internal use of Google. And PyTorch is popular because of its automatic differentiation on deep learning networks and supports high power GPU applications with NN module, Optimum module, and AutoGrad module. These are some of the modules that we're going to use uh, in the coding tutorial. The NN module enables us to create different types of neural networks. The Optimum module helps us to use different kinds of optimizers, such as Stochastic Gradient Descent Atom Optimizer. And the AutoGrad mod module uh, will help us to track the gradients and the computation graph for PyTorch. Finally, uh, let's uh, give a verdict for which one is a better 
uh, deep learning framework. Keras provides uh, multiple backend support and robust uh, prototyping. And for TensorFlow, uh, it has high performance and functionalities in object detection on a large data set. But for the advantage for PyTorch is flexibility and the duration of training is short compared to the other deep learning frameworks. And it has a wide variety of debugging. So this is a general introduction about the PyTorch framework. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to um, install the framework into our local machine. And we're going to start uh, experimenting with basic concepts uh, using PyTorch. Then we're going to move on and uh, deploy our own model. Uh, first, we'll deploy a convolutional neural network, then a recurrent neural network, and finally, uh, we'll try to build a generative, more sophisticated models such as GANs and uh, object detection models. Thank you for watching and tune in to learn more about the PyTorch framework. Hi, I'm Samet. I'm a researcher at Facebook, and I helped create PyTorch. PyTorch is an open source machine learning framework used for writing Python programs that describe an algorithm that can do artificial intelligence. People use PyTorch to uh, do fundamental AI research so that we build better building blocks that, uh, can, that you can build applications on top of. And then people use these building blocks to build more advanced AI models in specific fields, for example, for better self-driving cars, for better speech recognition. The field of AI in t like middle to late 2016 was grappling with the idea of doing neural networks that are more and more dynamic. The other problem was that there were rigidity in the networks you could define. Researchers wanted to make them more uh, determined by the network at runtime rather than predefined beforehand. And that's what tools before that were existing didn't really give a good way to do so. And that's roughly what PyTorch provided, and that's one of the big reasons why it exploded. It gives you a deep learning framework that brings dynamic neural networks and imperative programming as first-class citizens. When people build these applications, they want to actually deploy them at scale. We basically created a subset of Python called TorchScript, which is much more easily deployable. What we give you is a, is a seamless uh, uh, workflow where you start with research and then you start adding function annotations to your code the code, the part of the code that you actually want to ship to production. In this subset of Python, if you annotate your code, uh, to say my code is TorchScript compatible and it can be run by a torch.jit compiler. Then our compiler takes the code, it analyzes it, it modifies it, and it will run it faster and it can export it into our own intermediate representation. And you roughly get all the benefits of a compilation process that you would expect. We think this is one of the big uh, future directions for just not PyTorch, but also the field. Wherever the field goes, uh, we probably will have to adopt either with modifying PyTorch as it is today, or probably at some point rewriting PyTorch++. Audio Jungle.